Hello everyone, my name is Axel, and I'm going to be casting another 1 vs. 1 StarCraft 2 replay. This time it's going to be between, in the top left of Shakur's Plateau, we have the Red Zerg player VT Zerker. I'm assuming a member of VT Gaming, unless he's just trying to fool people, I don't know. But VT is a very good team, so I'm guessing we're going to see a good game here. And in the bottom right, we do have the blue Protoss player, Rev Dime. I think Rev stands for Team... Ravoski or something. I've, I've definitely heard of them, so they're definitely a good team. I know they have different tiers of uh, members. I think they have like Code S or uh, Code A. No, it's like Team A or like, you know, they have an inter-clan team like systems, like the B team and all that stuff. So uh, I'm not sure what Rev Dime is a part of, but this should be a good game because I got it off a replay website and people don't upload games to replay websites unless they are a good game. So let me get the name tag up so we can see who we're talking about and their supplies. So we see a lot of chatting here, so I'm going to assume this is not a ladder game, probably a practice game. Um, not entirely 100% sure though. And one thing I want to say, I am recording with Fraps this time. I was having a little bit trouble with the Camtasia recorder I was uh, using earlier because... Well, it was a little laggy, so hopefully this will be a lot more smooth, uh, not a lot more, uh, not an eyesore. How about that? We're not going for an eyesore here. We're going for a nice smooth casting experience so no one gets sick by watching laggy stuff going on. And we do have a 15 pool uh, from VT Zerker. He was going to put down his, uh, his hatchery at his expansion, but he wasn't able to because the probe is being annoying. There's a little micro battle the drone trying to prevent the pylon from going down, but Rev Dime will have none of that and does put down the pylon in order to delay that expansion. Checking around, looking at the gases, looking for the spawning pool, making sure nothing fishy is going on, and everything is pretty standard so far with Rev Dime getting his first gas at appropriate time, soon to put down his cybernex core, I would assume. There it is. Kind of creating a wall in right here. He's probably going to put a zealot right here to complete that wall and also putting down another pylon because this one was cancelled. Kind of surprising that he cancelled that. He could have delayed that hatchery a lot further but decides not to. Decides to let him get that hatchery down. Which is fine. So PVZ on Shakur's Plateau. What can we expect? Well, with the recent changes to the back rocks, they actually, Blizzard that is, removed these back rocks. So it's a lot harder to take a third I've found as a Protoss player. It's a lot harder to take a third. You can usually take this little nest in front of your main, or you can take this third over here and put some cannons at the ramp over here. So we'll see what Rev Dime decides to do, and this should be a very exciting game. Let's open up the production tab so we do not miss anything. We do see three drones being made. Not a high influx of speedlings, and not a high influx of zerglings, I should say, because speedlings aren't even close to being on the way because the gas is just now going down. Uh, a very delayed gas build. It's just kind of interesting. Not full Spanishiwa style where you wait till 40 food to get the gas, but... Delayed gas nonetheless, so we won't have speedlings down for a little bit, probably two more minutes. I wonder if Rev Dime is planning to exploit that fact that he won't be having speedlings. We'll have to see if he sends a zealot and some stalkers. Now, we do see Rev Dime putting a pylon at the lower part of his ramp, implying that he may do a expansion very soon. But we cannot completely guess that because some players will just put that there to fool their Zerg opponents. Into thinking, they, into thinking they are expanding when they'll actually put down more gateways and go for a pretty aggressive attack. So we do have two sentries being warped in... Oh, actually, two sentries being made. Warp gate is not finished. It is about 50% of the way done. And anything else interesting going on? We do have two zerglings being made by our zerg player. Probably going to use that for scouting purposes. Not really can do any aggressive... Uh, attacks right now because he is still producing those drones at a very fast pace and we also do have metabolic boost coming down for zerglings that won't be done for a little bit and five more drones coming down so both these players looking to go to the mid game because not any early aggression going on we do have an overlord this could go down if he gets a sentry over here fast enough the minerals will be blocking that off so one of the sentries is not able to get some shots off that could be pretty crucial as I think he would have been able to take down the overlord if both these sentries had been shooting at it but the overlord does get away with 56 hit points and the zerglings do poke in to make sure this expansion is getting down and we do have two more gateways coming down from Rev Dime so we could see some aggression once these finishes once these gateways finish but we'll have to see um, I, I kinda like aggression right here but the timing you have to worry about is the Roach Burrow timing so it's tricky. There's this little window in between when the Zerg has burrow and when he doesn't where you can attack. 
So you have to be careful in determining when you're going to make that attack so that he doesn't have Burrow. Because like, if he does have Burrow, that'll pretty much shut you down. But it doesn't look like VT Zerker is going to go Roaches. He is going a Baneling Nest. So I really like when Zergs go Banelings. Not only is it exciting to see, but it is also a very good strategy because Banelings are very cost efficient when they go... Ooh, we do have some spine crawlers being canceled by Mr. VT Zerker. I guess he was anticipating some aggression, but thought about it and decided that there's not going to be any aggression anytime soon. And we'll see what Rev Dime has to say about that. He's taking his third gas at the appropriate time. Nothing too out of the ordinary there. And we do have drop coming from Mr. VT Zerker. So if I had to guess, we're going to see some Banelings drop. Baneling drops this game, which is... A really exciting strategy that I think all Zerg should do at one point. You gotta experiment with that stuff. I mean, you can do so much damage to the mineral lines of an enemy Protoss. And of course, every Zerg's worst nightmare is that Void Ray Colossus Death Ball. And something to, you can do to prevent that is just go to the, take some Overlords and drop some Banelings in the mineral line. That cripples the Protoss so much. If you go after their economy, they can't do much to get out those units. Uh, to attack and kill you. So I do like this play from our Zerg player VT Zerker and we do have a push coming forward from Rev Dime. And VT Zerker does see it coming and in response does make some Banelings and Zerglings. We do have 12 Zerglings and 8 Banelings in production in order to combat this push. But I have a feeling Rev Dime is just going to poke forward and then poke back to his base. He doesn't want to overcommit himself at this point in the game and put him in an un put himself in an unwinnable situation. And there he goes back and back up. Oh, he's trying to decide what he's going to do. This is a very dangerous position to be in though, in my opinion. You don't want to be just frolicking around in the middle of the map because at any second Zerg can just swarm you with Zerglings and Roaches. Now I want to see what our Protoss player Rev Dime has seen out of the Zerg player. He actually hasn't seen much so Rev Dime has absolutely no idea what VT Zerker is doing. I'm not sure I like that. I would Suggest that he gets uh, Hallucinate because Hallucinate can get you that key scouting information and he would know what's coming But he has absolutely no idea that Banelings are being loaded up into Overlords. Oh, what do you know? There is the Hallucinate. So he does see Banelings, he does see Zerglings, and he does see a lot of Overlords So he can put two and two together and come up with the fact that he will be seeing Baneling drops We'll see how he prepares for that. Checking for the third. Does not see it there. Oh, does he see these Overlords? He does and it looks like VT Zerker making nothing but Ling, so I'm not going to say this is an all-in, but because he is expanding behind this attack, but he is pushing forward with a substantial amount of Zerglings and Banelings in those Overlords, so I do expect him to do a lot of damage. Do we have any cannons back here? Do we even have a forge at Rev Dime's base? No, no forge at all, so he's not going to have any cans to defend from this. Here come the Overlords coming forward with the Banelings. The Stalkers are trying to focus on the Overlords, putting down the Force Fields. The Zerglings can't get in, and he drops all the Banelings all over the sentries, and the Stalkers doing so much damage, taking out this entire a majority amount of the army, and the most important thing about that altercation is the amount of sentries he got. Protoss is very, very, very exposed when they don't have any sentries, and look at this. He's loading up the Overlords with the Zerglings, and he's going to hit the main multi-pronged attack, but he's force feeling the front ramp, and he's dropping those Zerglings into the main the Protoss army is fleeing back to try to defend this. Our enemy force field is going to go down. No, force field is going down. He's moving his Zerglings toward the mineral line, doing a lot of economic damage. But it looks like Rev Dime is going to clean this up, going to poke up and kill a lot of these overlords. Oh, and some Banelings are coming through the front. That sentry is not going to be able to hold this with because he has no force fields left. The Banelings are going to go toward the mineral line, but the probes are running away. He'll have none of that. Is he going to put a force field? Put it. Put a force field. There's a force field. Very good force field. Keeping those Banelings away from his units and taking them out. Pretty good control, but in the main, we still have some Zergling harassment.